This is a story of sea power. In November 1939, the war was too much over. Blitzkrieg on Poland had given the world a new word and the generals a new idea of battle. At sea, the problems were still the same. In war, Germany could feed herself. England could not. If the ships bringing England's food could be sunk or immobilized, England would starve and the war would be won. For this, the Germans had three powerful weapons, the magnetic mine, the U-boat, and the surface radio. These pocket battleships were strong and swift. There had never been anything like them. They were the tigers of the sea. Ten days before war was declared, one of these raiders sailed from a German port with secret orders. She sailed by night up the coast of Norway, passed unobserved through the Denmark Strait between Iceland and Greenland, and vanished into the southern Atlantic where a supply ship was already waiting for her. Months passed, and nobody suspected that a killer was back in there, until ship after ship failed to make its own port. That's what you are. My ship has won inside Portuguese territorial waters. So you can complain to our captain, Captain Langston. Complain? <laughs> What's the use of complaining? You've sunk my ship, you've stolen my papers. My position was clearly marked on the chart. Your chart is inaccurate. Here, take a look at that. That's the coast of Portuguese East Africa, isn't it? We're still within the three-mile limit, aren't we? Look, there's Cape Zavora. There's the lighthouse on Quesico Point. You aren't blind. All I can see, Captain, are two of your lifeboats carrying all your crew to safety. So you are the pocket battleship Graf Spey.
Well, Captain Duff. Well, Captain Langsdorff. How do you do, Captain? Uh, my boarding officer has reported your protest about the seizure of your ship. You say that you are in uh, territorial waters. If you were, that makes it very difficult for me. Not half so difficult, sir, it makes for me already. I've lost my ship and everything else. To my mind, there's not the slightest doubt I was well within the three-mile limit. If I had my chart here, I could... Here's your chart. Please, show me. I will. Look here. There. See that line? It couldn't be clearer. We're not likely to agree, Captain. You want the figures to prove you right and me wrong, whereas I want the figures to... Shall we make a compromise? You write out your protest and I'll give you a receipt. Is that fair? That's fair enough, sir. Shall we drink? Scotch. A genuine from the steamship Clement. Oh, so you sunk the Clement. See that? Also genuine? Yes, but not from the Clement, I think. No, from the Huntsman. Captain of the Huntsman was a pal of mine. He is, Captain. What, is he on board? Sir, uh, not exactly. Believe me, Captain, I don't like sending ships to the bottom. What's in or not? Nor do I like making war on civilians. Up till now, it's the civilians who have suffered in this war. <laughs> the army are sitting in armor and concrete, broadcasting to each other. The airmen are making reconnaissance flights, and the sailors are... Now, take me, for example. I'm in command of a fine ship, a new ship, one of the finest battleships afloat. They are fast. 25 knots. More. I have immense firepower. Six 11-inch guns and eight or ten five inch. Oh, you use your eyes. <laughs> and my orders are to sink merchant ships and avoid a battle. No, you never know, you love Captain. One of these days, without you wanting it, you might run up against one of ours. You have only three ships that can catch me. Repulse, Renown, and Hood. Oh, on paper. Your big battleships are not fast enough to catch me. Plenty of our cruisers are faster than you. They can't match my guns. On paper. I have one other advantage, Captain. The vastness of the sea. It's very difficult to find me. Well, I can appreciate that, sir. I don't understand how your supply ship can ever hope to find you. She can't. I find her. Well, isn't that just as difficult? It's the simplest thing in the world, Captain. The uh, details are secret, but the method is very old. The ocean is divided into squares, and I know exactly in which square my supply ship will be on a certain date. Very interesting. I know exactly what you're thinking, Captain, but the charts are safe. And so are you for the duration. So you see, I can hunt the seven seas from the North Pole to the South. Well, I hope you won't go as far as that, sir, because I'm not quite dressed for it. We'll get our tailor to make you something warmer. Oh, so we are going south. Perhaps. Then go. <coughs> Would you like to see over my ship? I might as well. I've got an hour or two. Uh, my master down will show you to your quarters.
stepped in, we've sighted another merchantman. I must ask you to come to your quarters. He's pulling a him. Follow me, please. Very nice. Yeah, Mitchell's quarters. Very nice and spacious. Mm -hmm. You will be 29 other officers here. 29? Yes. When we meet our supply ship, all officer prisoners will be transferred here. Oh. Better pick my corner first. <laughs> we are taking you home for Christmas. Oh, that's jolly. When? Or oh, sometime. Soon. <laughs> Taylor, Captain Langsdorff says you put them on, you come on deck. as if Father Christmas has arrived. Yes. Fresh meat, green vegetables, fruit, and some fuel. your navy interest. I'm like a pretty girl. I change my frock, I change my hat. I'm a different girl. Give me 
is going to be my new father. Candace. Well, yeah, encourage. Would. With that help. Who is this wolf, uh, James Hyde? Yeah, Captain. Oh, James. Yes, Jane, a very useful publication. That is our new city. An American heavy crew. Well, that's why you've got a number painted on your bars. Do you think you'll get away with it? Enough to avoid recognition. Thank you. Five minutes at 28 knots makes all the difference between being in range and out of range. There are only two things to remember in a modern naval battle, Captain. Good intelligence from shore, so that you know what to expect when you see it. Good spotting on your own ship, so that you know what you see when you expect it. Talking of silhouettes, I must congratulate you and our tailor. Not bad. Thanks. I want you to look your best, Captain. I'm transferring to the ship all the officers who are prisoners on the Ogma. Oh? May I ask why, sir? Yes, the gas pay is being relieved by another vessel. We've finished our turn of duty. Three months, Captain. I'm going home for a bit of leave. I must take my prisoners with me. We'll have company tonight. I really ought to be in my own uniform to meet the boys. Yeah, yeah. I say, they had more time to pack than I had. Oh, no, you're coming anyway. You and Bates first. Come on, lad. Oh, Quick, grab one of the corners. Uh, come on, boys. Uh, the corners are closing. Uh, come on, you can meet you over here. Oh, you. Over here. Huntsman. Where's the huntsman? Trevanian. Where's Trevanian? Trevanian? Captain. All time law around this table. Come on, sir. All right. Give us a bomb. This is Hi. Good evening, Captain. Why, you're one of us. I thought you were a jetty. No, I'm Dove, Africa Shell. Glory be, a new face. When were you sunk, Dove? November the 15th, Indian Ocean. Any others with you? No, no, I was the last ship they sunk. They only took me. Hear that, boys? Not a kill for nearly three weeks. She must be getting angry. How have they treated you? Quite all right. How's the Captain? Yes, what's the old man like? Fine, fine, he's a gentleman. Not like our fellow Dahl on the Altmark. He was a proper swine, a real... Floating ruddy hell. Our men like cattle in the hole. Just four walls and a stinking bucket. Yeah. Oh, he doesn't... Oh, he <laughs> This is going to be no pleasure cruise, either. Hello? Well, that's a bit of luck. The chip has left the screw holes unstopped. Very thoughtful of him. Oh. You know, when I was all alone, I fancied company. No, I'm not so sure. <laughs> she's moving, boys. Yes, yes, she's on the way. Well, who are you all? Well, let's have a master. Huntsman. Newton Beach. Ashley. 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 Tyro. Trevanian. All present, correct. Africa Shell. Who's next? Some rat. <laughs> hey, now, come on, don't start me. Shut up, everybody! Here comes old Zonk. Yeah, now we'll know who's been bumped this time. Gentlemen, the fight is finished. Fight? 
Wort weit. Wir haben Sunker. Danke. 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 Deutsch da. Kaputt. Deutsch da, that's all stops. What the old Doric star? She's a perishing meatball. Hey, we might get a good feed out of this. She only had a rotten little four inch mounted off. Poor old stops. Wait till the Navy catches up with you. Oh, we will. I hope you picked up the crew. You shelled her long enough. <laughs> Soon you have lots more friends here. More? Where are they going to put them? Oh, plenty room here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Plenty room here. Make it. Well, hey, hi. Come see. This way, this is the big. Well, welcome aboard, Captain. I'm Dub, Africa Shell. I'm Stubbs, Doric Stubbs. Yes, we know we got the bells from Zonk. Cottinger, Ashley. Yes, Hello, yes. Stubbs. Hi, oh, John Robson. Hello. Welcome to the Hello. Arab Quarter. You remember me, Captain? Murphy, Tyroa. Yes. You caught you with your yes. pants on, eh? Sorry for this get-up. No time to get my gear. It's a punishment for using my radio. Yeah, we're yeah, we're sorry, man. Man. Kept them on the roll all afternoon. Did you get through, Sparks? No doubt about it. No. Did they board you, Captain? No, we scuttled her. Another meatless day. Yes, ah, very brave, but very foolish. You're lucky you didn't get zunk. Zunk, zunk, zunk. Auf Wiedersehen. <laughs> <laughs> we reserve table tops for captains, engine room staff below. <laughs> <laughs> Did you bring any soap, Cheesy? No. No soap, no time. You don't throw that away. Some of us haven't seen a paper for a month. Where did it come from? Big A. From which half of you have, Stubbs? Do you read Spanish? It's the racing page. I'm not interested in horses. Oh, neither am I. Captains and officers. Today is St. Nicholas Day, when we in our country hang up our stockings. We have only one Christmas tree, and that is for our own men. But we have plenty decoration. A present from Captain Langstorff. <laughs> Come, hey, enjoy yourself. Give us a mouth, will you? Okay, thank you. Another little ship for Uncle Ladow's stocking. This is funny. Getting interested in racing, Stubbs. Very funny. Funny? You mean the names they settle on those poor ruddy horses? South America. You'd expect funny names there. That's what I mean. Here are all these horses racing in B.A., Rio and Monte, and you find more British names than Spanish. They talk Portuguese in Rio, not Spanish. Ajax, Achilles. <laughs> What's British about that? They look more like Greek to me. <laughs> what names did you say? Ajax, Achilles, Salvador, Exeter, Puntumbria, Cumberland. They're not horses, they're cruisers. That's right. I know the Achilles. It's a, it's a Kiwi cruiser. It's, it's a South American a squadron. squadron. Board ship. Commodore Howard squadron. Yeah. Squadron. Oh, so's the Cumberland. What a coincidence. Coincidence, my Aunt Fanny. That's how it's done. You mean this is shipping news, not racing news? Intelligence, that's what it is. They've got spies <laughs> everywhere. Oh, so have we. Oh, we. But they get their news in the papers. Well, there are people read it. They pass it on to the Graf's fee. Captain Lansdorff holds his course. Uh, but why should he? What can we do with our six and eight inch cruisers against a big beggar like the Graf Spey? Yeah, with 11 inch flipping guns. One of these days you may find out. Ajax, Achilles, Exeter, we've no more chance of finding them than a needle in a haystack. Cheer up, Stubbs. Three needles in a haystack.
Make to Achilles and Exeter. I would like to see you 1100 today on board flagship. Put a time of origin on that. All right, sir. Got the charts prepared? Yes, sir, they're all ready. Good. Flag deck, make to Exeter. Flagship signaling, sir. Flagship, Chief. From Flagship, sir. Bobby, I want the sea boat later. Commodore calling a council of captains at sea. By the Nelson touch, eh? Flag deck, make to Achilles. Pilot. Sir. I shall want the sea boat to go to Ajax in about half an hour. Yes, sir. We haven't had much opportunity to exercise the sea boat recently. No, sir. I think they'll drown us all. It's back to the sheep farm for them if they do. Have you any idea, sir, about the Commodore intends to do with us? Now that he's got three ships to play with. I should think one thing's quite certain, sir. We should be carrying out squadron maneuvers. Yes, well, that won't do us any harm. Will it? Chief Yeoman. Sir. Keep your eye on the flagship. Aye, aye, sir. If I know the old man, we shall soon find out. seen you for years. Not since that famous football game, Twickenham, remember? <laughs> I'll take care not to leave you two together. Hookie will be tipping you off about my bad habits when I flew my broad pennant to next time, huh? Eh? Achilles, sir. Good morning, sir. Glad to see you, Parry. Good morning, Woodhouse. Good morning. Uh, Hookie, I don't think you know Parry. Uh, I don't. Well, how are you in New Zealanders shaping? 500 individualists. <laughs> Uh, Hookie, sir. That defect list and list of spares for Exeter that I asked you to get out and send to base, has it gone yet? Uh, no, not yet, sir. What's the delay? I'm sorry, sir. It's not completed yet. I'll, uh, I'll have it finished today. Please complete it and have it put on board the first merchant ship that can take it. Yeah. Well, let's start. Uh, come on, Fanny. Uh, please smoke if you want to. I've, um, <laughs> I've taken the rather unusual course of sending for you because I wanted to see you yeah. and give you personally my appreciation of the situation. I've ordered this concentration here off the River Plate because of news that I've received of the latest movements of a German surface radar that's at large in the South Atlantic. I'd like you to look at the chart. The Admiralty have good information that this pocket battleship, it may be the Admiral Scheer or the Graf Spee or the Deutschland, sailed from Kiel on August the 21st. She took up position well before war was declared. Up to September the 30th, she attacked no shipping. I can guess why not. 
Hitler thought that after the fall of Poland, Britain and France would make peace. However, on September the 30th, she sank the Clement here of Pernambuco. She immediately left this area for mid-Atlantic, where between October the 5th and the 10th, her victim is with the Newton Beach, Ashley and the Huntsman. Once again, she left this area hurriedly to proceed to the west coast of Africa, where she sank the Trevannion. Again, she moved to a new hunting ground, rounded the Cape into the Indian Ocean, presumably to attack the Cape in the Australia routes. But she only sank a small tanker, the Africa Shell, here in the Mozambique Channel. She then presumably doubled back, because some days ago, she sank the Blue Star Liner, Doric Star, there. As she knows that the Doric Star managed to get off a signal that she was being attacked, it's obvious that the radar will want to get out of that area as soon as possible. Now, in my opinion, she will do one of three things. One, she'll double back again into the Indian Ocean. Two, she'll try and slip back to Germany as she came out through the Denmark Strait. Or three, before returning home, she'll come over here to our part of the world, where she should have been all the time, to make a last killing among the grain ships and meat cargoes of South America. And it's my instinct that that's exactly what she'll do. Making a guess at her probable speed, I estimate that if she were making for Rio, she'd be there this morning, December the 12th. If she's making here for the River Plate, and that's what I believe, she'll be here 24 hours later. Tomorrow. Yes, tomorrow. My object is destruction of the enemy. My intention, to attack at once, day or night. She can outgun us and outrange us. So, as soon as we sight the beast, we will close at maximum speed and divide her fire by attacking on separate flanks. Ajax and Achilles will attack in close company. Exeter will attack on her own. In this way, besides splitting the enemy's main armament, we can also report each other's fall of shot. I wish I had the Cumberland. I could do with another eight-inch cruiser. But she's still refitting at the Falkland. She won't join us for a fortnight. Now, tell your ship's companies they've got to be on their toes for the next few days. Search for any defect that might reduce fighting efficiency. Have it dealt with. We will exercise my tactics for engaging a pocket battleship both in daylight and after dark today. Staffy, where's the sun? Well over the yard, Arthur. Then open the gin. Tell the gunnery officer to sweep the horizon now. Guns. Sweep the horizon both sides. Right. Stacy. Sir. Train right. Dorset. Dorset. Should be good visibility, sir. Oh, what a lovely dream I was having. And why she? No, it wasn't a she. No talking you. Archer, advance. It was 
was him I was dreaming of. Him? Yeah. I was staying at the Ritz Hotel in London. Go on. Yeah, that chief buffer was the hall porter. <laughs> I sent him out in the pouring rain for a taxi. And when he came, I said, fetch me another one, my man. I don't like the colour. <laughs> Fifty, sir. Nice gentle breeze. Gonna be a perfect day. Good morning. Who's this? I didn't notice. Well, today is the day. Yeah. Captain, sir. Yes, guns. Horizon clear. Thank you. All right to fall out from action station, sir? Better wait for the flagship. Full visibility now, sir. Nothing inside. Third degree readiness, sir. All right, pilot. Cruising stations. Persons made. Sir. Sound dispersed. Sound off cruising aye, stations. Aye, aye, sir. Signal flying. Assume third degree readiness. Close up the cruising watch. Bugler. Bugler. Yes, sir. Sound the disperse. Aye, aye, sir. Freely, the eyes of December are come. I Caesar, but not God. Six ten, sir. I shall be in my cabin. Aye, sir. Keep a sharp lookout. Aye, sir. Especially on the flagship. I'm going down for a shave and a bath. Keep an eye on everything. And two eyes on the Commodore. It's not it. Go and work out the time of moonrise tonight. Shall I bring those papers to sign after breakfast? Yeah. Dobbs? Sure. Let me know immediately you see anything. Aye, sir. You fellows keep your eyes skin. Right, sir. Well, you heard.
regards to the watch, closed up, sir. Very good. Bearing red 100. Very good. Commodore, sir. Smoke bearing red 100. From the northwest? Yes, sir. Tell Exeter to investigate. Aye, sir. Chief Hillman? Sir. Make to Exeter, investigate smoke red 100. Aye, aye, sir. Signal from flagship, sir. Uh -huh. Have you dispatched list of spares? If smoke hours, put list aboard for base. Very good. That list of spares again, eh? That's going to annoy the old man. Sir, can you see those upper works? Looks like a pocket battleship. Oh, don't be so ruddy ridiculous, Swanson. That's the third pocket battleship you've seen since Sunday. Captain, sir, will you come on deck? Very good. I can see a control tower. I'm sure I can. Been on big ships. So you're always saying. Penny fella, can you make her out? A lot of hay, sir. Here is data. Get up top, see what you can see from there. Hi, sir. Exeter signaling, sir. The shear is on our port B. Very good. Sound off action stations. Sound the alarm. Bugler! Sound off action, followed by the double. Towards her. 
Fort 20. Speed 28 knots. Forge 28, 210 revolutions. Flag deck, hoist battle ensigns. Make to Admiralty from Commodore South Atlantic. I am engaging pocket battleship. Give them our reference position. It's not a reference position. Unship that damn thing. <laughs> Your speed signal, answer, sir. Execute. Umbrellas up. DCT bridge. We're about to open fire. We're opening fire, sir. Good. What about the depth charges on the quarter deck, sir? We get a direct hit, they'll blow our stern off. May I jettison them? By all means. Quarter deck. Prepare the catapult aircraft. Catapult platform. Prepare the catapult aircraft. Torpedoes ready for firing, sir. We'll soon be within range. Right. I can't understand what our captain's doing. If you've got a longer reach than the other fellow, why get in close? Broadsides! Well done, the Royals. We're opening fire, sir. At last. Jack's open fire, sir. Maximum range. Not for long, sir. Starboard 20. Guns? Sir? I should always steer towards last fall of shot. So be prepared to correct accordingly. Yes, sir. Understand, pilot? Yes, sir. Hope the enemy doesn't, sir. Midships. Open fire as soon as you can, guns. We're opening fire now, sir.
Did you watch that smell? It's our plane's spirit. Put out that cigarette, you damn fool. The spotting plane's been hit. It's bang overhead. We've got the radio. Goes up. Oh, burn to a crisp. Now I like your Yorkshire pudding. What's wrong with Yorkshire pudding? Yeah, Bob. When I'm done this side, will you turn me over? Enemy altering course towards us, sir. That suits us. Concentrating all our main armament on Exeter now, sir. What? The devil's ears. Where are the main target now, sir? <laughs> Who's that running for? They're on the boat, sir. Looks like more. Ask the word to all parts of the ship that we're hitting the enemy as hard as they're hitting us. Yes, sir. Pilot! Right in on Exeter, sir! Looks like forward turret. Disappeared in smoke and flame. Oh, 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 oh. doesn't destroy us. That last one was very near the pit. Thank 
reckon I'll tie back home. We'll get stuck in and do it again. Of action, sir. Why turret jam? We're working on it. All right, Doc. You've still got two left. Next time, firing ammunition hoist. Lift down, see if it's under control. Aye, aye, sir. Captain, sir. Yes, sir. We fired nearly 1200 rounds, sir. Like one third of the artillery will remain. Thank you. Are you all right? A few new ventilation gaps here, sir. We draft it. Otherwise, it's all right. can make it, he will. Signal. Receive Falklands. Godspeed. Firing for a quarter of an hour. More like half an hour. I checked it on my watch. I wonder what made us put our caps on. <laughs> yes, you're right. I did protection. <laughs> By Jove, I, I'd give anything to know. Do you think our ships are sunk? Not likely. They shouldn't be hurrying like this if they were. <laughs> What's she going to do, eh? She's not turning after us anyway. We'll keep on shadowing her from either quarter. I'm starving. You wouldn't go and see if there's any food, would you? Why don't you do it, Ralph? What, in my condition? <laughs> All right. Oh, oh, oh. Is anybody hurt? Oh, hurt? Oh, oh, oh. Tony, oh, oh, oh. Tony, I'm dead! Here, there's a police right 
hole in the roof. Look. Only scratches here. Seems all right. Well, that's the luckiest thing ever. It must have struck the deck beam. Oh, it won't for that beam. We're a hundred. Who said the craft spared sunk our ships? We're right on our tail. They're right on our tail, you mean. My soul is out there with the boy. I wish I was. I'm going to take a look, see. Give me a hand. Come on, boys. Come on, boys. Up we go. You did order toast, didn't you, madam? That was the forward turret. She's not done yet. Keep off the grass. Gonna do a bit of altering course, though. Yeah. Start at ten. Start at ten. Be ready to close in and finish her when the light fails. Keep her between us and the afterglow. She'll be silhouetted against the western sky. That's it. We'll be in the cover of the dark. Do you think you can get that light going, Chief? No. The cable aft must be cut. What about the Christmas decorations? Good idea. Some paper lanterns among them. Has anybody got a match? Should we use them now or save them till later? We might not need them later. I'm lighting this one to my guardian angel. Down, boys. You're right. What do you make of that, Peter? <laughs> she stopped. Yes, yes, she stopped. That's right. Langsdorff's going to let our chaps dash past him in the dark, then turn in his tracks and slip out to sea again. Oh, that's it. By morning, he'll be miles out at sea. If only we could do something. Quiet! <coughs> Listen. Gentlemen, for you, the battle is over. We are now in Montevideo Harbor. So, so Captain Langstorff has told me to tell you that as we are in the neutral country of Uruguay, according to international law, you will all be set free tomorrow.
Nothing I won't do for you. That is just what you will do. Nothing. Thank you, sir. See you in a moment, Tito, por favor. Oh, For Mike? Senor Mike? But how can I? All the lines are busy. Every newspaper man from Buenos Aires, Rio Santiago, wants a room here. Newspaper man. Let him sleep in the gutter. Si, senor, lo conecto. Momentito. Come on, Coco. I want NBC, CBC, ABC. Ay, sí, sí, sí. I know. The whole alphabet. Si, momentito, senor, que lo conecto. Si, senor Mike, que va a venir el gerente. All I can promise you at this stage, Your Excellency, is to send a commission of experts on board your ship, Captain Langsdorff, to assess the damage she has received. His Excellency, the British Minister. My dear doctor. Dear Millington Drake, the Uruguayan government, with its well known democratic principles, will act in accordance with international law and in turn grasp Bay for the duration of the war, will she not? His Excellency, the French Chargé d'Affaires. Monsieur Desmoulins. Your Excellency. I suppose another note? By the terms of the Hague Convention. Ah, the much quoted Hague Convention, gentlemen. Article 17 says that warships of belligerents may make no repairs in the ports and roads of neutrals beyond those necessary for safety at sea, and may not in any way increase the fighting efficiency of the vessel. Now, I bring to Your Excellency's notice the fact that since the battle, Graf Speer has already sailed 300 miles. At top speed, mon dieu, elle a couru comme un lapin. Gentlemen, since midnight, I have received three diplomatic notes from the German minister, two from the British, and two from the French. We are only a small nation which has imposed upon itself the heavy burden of neutrality. Do not, I beg you, make it any heavier. Forgive me for asking. Do you think you will be able to enforce your country's decision? That is it. And where are the guns of the Graf Spee trained at this moment? Not on the enemy, no. All are trained on the city of Montevideo. Force majeure, my dear Guani, force majeure. Monsieur Desmoulins, Mr. Millington Drake, in our short history, my small country has survived many threats. We grow fat on threats. Each time we have been threatened, my whole country has taken a step forward. We are very simple. We are only two million people. We only understand a few things. Law, we understand. Justice, we understand. Threats, we will never understand. See me? I'm not big. But I have two million heads. <laughs>
Hey, Pop, wake up, you crazy mixed-up gaucho. Are they getting us? Reporting on the craft spade of the whole of the United States. Tell them this is the best view in Uruguay. Tell them we've got a post office permit. Yeah, go cool. on, tell them. Come on, talk, come on, talk. Tell him he'll be famous. His joint, his joint will be famous. Tell him all the Americans will come here to photograph the Graf Spade. Oh, come on, come on, come on. This is my father. Manolo, he's safe. The British will escape the Graf Spade before the Americans will be spent here. And he can make a ballet now. And four people can take a drink at this table. Maybe six. Tell him he can bring me six scotches every half hour as long as I'm here. Show him the dog. Okay, and he provides the bottle spree to pour the drink back. I can't drink on the job, but I'm not going to waste good scotch. Hello, New York. Hello, New York. He's not knocking himself out, any, is he? Hello, New York. Hello. Hey, Pop, wake up. We're making history. job for intelligence. Where's uh, Ray Martin? Mr. Martin is down at the docks. The naval attaché from Buenos Aires is there with him. I believe they've installed themselves in a ship's chambers with a trap door and a telescope. And a cloak and a dagger. Will you leave me out of this? I've got a call in for them. Captain McCall. Oh, hello, Minister. Yes. Yes, Ray Martin's here. He says the street outside the embassy is crawling with volunteers. Take their names. We'll sort them out later. We're organizing a 24-hour watch on the Graf Spade. If someone makes a list, we'll screen them later. We'll certainly need volunteers. Well, goodbye, Mr. Is this how you live at home? Hey, look out. chatty ship you've come from. Perhaps this fishing boat is moved right in my line of sight. Hello. From VIP in a lawn. It's my old friend Langman, German minister. Paying an official call on Langsdorff. Langsdorff seems a high-class person. Yes, he is. I'm looking at him. Let's have a look. He shaved his beard off. British seamen drawn up on the quarter deck. There must have been British prisoners on board the Graf Spade during the battle. 
Der ist hier. sighted uh, two destroyers and another ship. It wasn't until we closed with them that I realized they were cruisers. By that time, we'd already joined them in battle. I couldn't take my eyes off them. They came at me like destroyers. Uh, they kept coming at me. I couldn't believe that they dared do this unless they were supported by bigger ships. I thought they were trying to drive me out into the guns of bigger ships. Would you mind telling me their names, sir? Huh? Yes, the Ajax, Achilles, and the Exeter. Let's forget formalities, gentlemen. Your Excellency is well aware of the facts. Let me see if I've got them right. Early yesterday morning, off Punta del Este, a naval battle took place. The German pocket battleship Admiral Graf Spee was engaged by three British cruisers, the Exeter, the Ajax, and the Achilles. In course of this engagement, the German battleship gained a victory. The British cruiser Exeter was seen to be shot to pieces, and the other British cruisers fled. The Graf Spee received a few minor hits and then proceeded to... That is not correct. No? No. The Graf Spee suffered serious damage. She is not seaworthy. I'm quoting the official communique of your own government, quoted by your own official agency, Deutsches Nachrichtenbüro, issued today at 
13.15 Greenwich Mean Time. Your Excellency knows that in wartime, official news must take into consideration the psychology of the people, the maintenance of morale, of... Captain Langstorff, how would you assess the damage to your ship? Uh, my galleys have been destroyed. I cannot feed my men. As for the other damage, you sent a technical commission on board and I gave them a waiter. I have the report. How much time would you say was necessary to make you seaworthy? In my assessment, two to three weeks, at least two weeks. My commission suggests 48 hours. What? But there are 64 hits on the superstructure alone. 65. In view of this, my government has decided to grant an extension of 72 hours in order to render your ship, the Admiral Graf Spey, seaworthy. The time limit being 8 p.m. on Sunday, the 17th of December, but prohibiting, in accordance with the articles of the 13th Hague Convention, any repairs with the purpose of increasing the fighting strength of the vessel. I most strongly protest. I note your protest. Hello, McCall. Very glad to see you. You know Woodhouse, don't you? Hello, Woodhouse. Medley, my staff officer. Hello, Medley. Hello, sir. Good morning, Captain. Howard, I... Come on. Come on over here. Now, McCall, you've got to stop her sailing. Stop her? But we've been moving heaven and earth to get the Uruguayans to throw her out. Yes. We've persuaded well, them. Well, now you can unpersuade them. You've got to keep her here. But how can I now, sir? That's up to you and Martin. Use every possible means. Invoke the 24-hour rule, anything. Look, my three ships aren't enough to make the issue certain. You know how long it took us to corner her? And the mouth of this river's 100 miles wide? Well, if she gets away again... And she might, she might. I was very lucky on the 13th. I'm not sure I'll be so lucky a second time. I see. Admiralty have ordered a concentration on Montevideo. All hunting groups. Here, Medley. But just you look at the chart. Course K. Canal at Agua. 600 miles east of Pernambuco. 2,500 miles away. Have to refuel at Rio. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, huh? Mm. Tuesday is the earliest they can be here. Neptune and the French vortex even farther. Dorsetshire left Cape Town Wednesday. 4,000 miles to sea. See? You've got to keep her here till Tuesday at least. Well, we better get moving. That's the spirit. Warn the boat's crew and get my golf hunt. Poor old Millington Drake. I can just see his face when I put him into reverse. How's he doing? Oh, wonderful job. He's taken them all in his stride. Minister of Marine, Defense, Foreign Office. He's at them day and night, waving the Hague Convention. <laughs> By George, yes. Luisi, Campos, Guani, 
why I was playing golf with Campos and Luisi only a few days ago. And talking of golf, look at my clubs. Those clubs? Oh, toothpicks. That's all they are now, toothpicks. One shell took all their heads off. Good shooting, eh? On a fair ground, it would have won a teddy bear. <laughs> well, don't let the captain of the port arrest you for smuggling. Tell him I'll bring him some kid in a few weeks' time. You know, sir, the South American states claim all the River Plate as territorial waters. All of it, between Punta de Medanos and Punta del Este? Yes, I do. Suppose the grass bait does make a break for Buenos Aires. Will you try and stop it? McCall, I was never much good on a horse, but I know the drill. Don't take your fences until you have to. Goodbye, sir. Bye. Good luck. Excuse me, sir. This has just come through to the Commodore. Thank you. Baker's signal to Admiralty from Commodore's South Atlantic. I beg your pardon, sir, but that signal is incorrect. I haven't said anything yet. You have, sir. I said make a signal to Admiralty. What's wrong with that? Then you went on to say from Commodore South Atlantic. Well, I... I am Commodore Harwood, aren't I? No, sir. You are Rear Admiral Sir Henry Harwood, Knight Commander of the Bar. My congratulations, sir. Sir? Oh, I say. What's the matter? Bad news? I've been made a companion of the bar. So are Parry and Bell. <laughs> <laughs> Look at us. One commander, one companion of the bar, and on a blinking bar stump between us. <laughs> I shall never be any good after this as an ordinary naval attaché. Who cares? You realize you're asking me for your own evil ends to violate one of the... Morning, Your Excellency. There he is, Mr. Millington Drake. Back to the shore. Will you leave us, please? His Excellency, the British Ambassador in Buenos Aires. Take care of the enemy's ears. <laughs> Well, here goes my professional reputation. What is going on at that end? Is that you, Millington Drake? McCall here, sir. Ah, you, McCall, yes? An emergency has arisen over the Graf Spey. Careful, McCall, security. I know, sir, but this is most urgent. I have just heard by Admiralty Code scrambler, you that know. two of our capital ships... Are you mad, McCall? I'm going to hang up. Sir, I must insist. In this case, urgency overrides security. Urgent. Both these capital ships will be calling in the next few hours at Bayer... I told you before, this is at no... Bayer step. Blanca to refuel. McCall! Oh. They'll be down to their last drop when they arrive. Stop it! Stop it! They, they've, they've steamed at full speed for the plate for obvious reasons. This is raving mad. They request that we arrange for 2,000 tons of fuel oil... Really, McCall, you ...of fuel stop. oil to be available in tankers as from tonight. The afternoon papers will be out soon. Knowing how leaky the telephone cables are between here and Buenos Aires, I shall expect to see the headlines screaming that half the British fleet are off Punto del Este. <laughs> Excuse me, senorita. Could you translate this for me? The lighthouse keeper at the Punta del Este reports that the battleship 
Barham and other powerful units, the British fleet have joined Admiral Harwood's squadron. Thank you. Lighthouse people must have very good eyesight. The orange and drives off at Gibraltar. Mr. Millington Drake. Sir? Why are your agents now trying to delay the sailing of the Graf Spey? Explain this change of attitude. Your Excellency, it's not a change of attitude. No? No. It's a change of strategy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is Sunday morning, 10-15, the 17th of December, the day upon which the time limit set for the Graf Spey will expire. To be precise, at 8 p.m. local time, she must sail or the Uruguayan government will intern her. Now, the situation is far from clear, for at the moment, we're witnessing the departure of a French merchant vessel, the Côte d'Azur. And apparently, according to the neutrality law, a merchant ship must be given 24 hours notice or 24 hours grace before an enemy warship can sail after her. So it seems that if the Graf Spey sails or doesn't sail, she's breaking the law. Now, it's rumored that outside the mouth of the Rio de la Plata, there are five or possibly six seven British warships waiting for her. Another rumor says that the Germans, too, are bringing up reinforcements so that a naval battle even greater than Wednesday's is imminent. Now, we all figured the Graf Spey would make a run for it under cover of darkness, but she's still here. Her captain, Captain Hans Langsdorff, has worked the whole night with the local Nazi diplomatic authorities towards one of Germany's most important decisions since the war began. Will they take this battered vessel out of the haven of the River Plate? If not, she'll be in turn, my boy. Will they make a dash for Buenos Aires, four hours steaming up the channel? Will it be a fight to the death? To get shot up wouldn't be very good propaganda, would it? I wonder how Goebbels would explain that. Nobody knows. An hour ago, Captain Langsdorff returned to his ship. He had spent nearly three hours ashore. The German minister, Dr. Langman, accompanied him to the quay, and as they shook hands, was heard to say, until tomorrow. Naturally, he said it in German. I'm giving you a translation of his Mr. Words. Beasley of the Trevanion. And Captain Dove of the Africa Shell. Good. I've seen you before. Oh. When? In the Graf Spey, with this. Lined up on deck when Langman came on board for the funeral. That's right. I see you all went to it. Yes, we all went. We wanted to. I can understand that. In a way, you were shipping it. It must have been a terrifying experience. My monkey certainly thought so. Well, you're well out of it. Yes. I shouldn't like to have known you were on board when she sailed. Do you think she'll try to break out, sir? Well, you know our captain better than we do. He'll fight. He's a good seaman. Flash, this is Mike Fowler reporting to you from Montevideo. The latest rumor is that the Graf Spey may be granted an extension of time. It's a bright, sunny day here in Montevideo. Very sunny indeed. Visibility is about 20 miles, but the British warships are out of sight. It is now absolutely definite that no less than 13 Allied warships, including the battleship Renown and the carrier Ark Royal, are waiting outside. The same question is on everybody's lips. Will the Graf Spey dare to come out? Yeah. Buzz off, Swanston. From our ambassador in Buenos Aires. Strong rumor current here that the Graf Spey will sail tonight. So she is coming out. Is she? What would you do if you had the Graf Spey under your command? Well, I'd come out as soon as it was dark, try and dodge the ships waiting for me outside, get to the open sea again. If I fail to dodge them, I'd fight to a finish. Isn't that what you'd do, sir? Sounds simple. I uh, wonder if it sounds that simple to Langsdorff. Why not? He's got plenty of headaches. Headache number one, he doesn't know what force we've got out here. Headache number two, he can let himself be interned in Montevideo. But Uruguay might come into the war later on on our side, and then the Graf Spey would fall into our hands might make a dash for Buenos Aires, but the channel's narrow. And shallow. And muddy. If he fouls up his water intake, he'll be a sitting duck. Yes. He'll come out. 
When do you think you'll move? Now. In the next 15 minutes, that's when I'd weigh anchor. Let's go and see. Mm. Captains of warships, my dear Woody, are not only naval officers. What we do or don't do is being constantly interpreted one way or another by friends and enemies, or neutrals. If we sink her, it can only be interpreted one way. I'm not so sure. Think a bit, Heart of Oak. If we open fire within a river plate, we'll be accused of violating neutral territory. Think what little Goebbels will make of it. Well, it's up to you, sir. Yeah. Thank you very much. Hello, hello. This is Mike Fowler reporting to you once again from my waterfront ringside seat in Montevideo. I had to go off the air just now because the crowd here was so immense they broke my microphone cable. However, thanks to the gallant police of Uruguay, order has been restored and the line has been repaired. There's two for you. Grateful thanks to you. Kurt. Plays on thick, doesn't he? As you know, the time limit set for the Graf's Bay was 8 p.m. local time this evening. It is now 7.50. Ten minutes to go. It's hard to describe the scene here as tension mounts by the minute. All right, Woody, here we go. Make to Achilles and Cumberland. Form a single line ahead. Sir. Hey, Jack. Break on, hoist. Order one. <laughs> and it's an outsize in bowler hats if this goes wrong. Everybody in Montevideo who can walk, ride, or crawl has come down to the waterfront to get a ringside view of this first real climax of the war. The crowd here on the beaches and rooftops would put the Army-Navy football crowd to shame. All afternoon, we watched men being transferred to the SS Tacoma, the German merchantman which has moved up close to the Graf's Bay. There can only be a suicide crew left on board this monster lying here before us in the harbor. This sinister, powerful, menacing monster. This afternoon, we heard the sound of the Graf's Bay's engines. And now her diesels have started up again. There's black smoke coming out of her fun... <coughs> Excuse me, I'll have to get a drink of water. My throat's getting dry with excitement. Mine, too. Pop, give me a drink. Now, excuse me, folks, while I gulp some water. My throat's getting dry with excitement. Hombre, l'ultima botella, huh? What, you too? The vast crowd, which is being so noisy all afternoon, seem to have lost their voices as well. Everybody is watching in silence. Now. No. Yes, yes. Ladies and gentlemen, the pocket battleship Graf Bay is finally moving. Yes, she's moving out of the harbor. Moving out of the harbor now under her own power. Go on to 18 knots. One for our revolution. Still 270, due west. Okay. Anything could happen now. Get about aircraft. We're standing spellbound here in Montedale as the great pocket battleship leaves for harbor. Some people are waving. I can see some women on their knees praying. Nobody knows what Captain Langsdorf intends to do. Nobody knows what Herr Hitler has told him to do. Whether he prefers the pride of the German Navy to be interned or whether he wants her to fight a short, spectacular, vicious action. Nobody knows. But we are all aware of the fact that the German propaganda machine cannot possibly afford to lose a battle with the whole of the world looking on and taking sides. Ajax aircraft reporting. I think she's ready to see Charles of Buenos Aires. Graf's Bay is now about three miles out. Seems to have changed course. Yes, yes, she's changing course towards the British ships. Now she's slowing down. Looks like she's going to stop. She's stopped now. Yes, definitely, she has stopped. The mighty battleship has come to a halt. We're all in suspense. The sun is just touching the horizon, and through my glasses I can see quite clearly that a big launch has left the battleship and is proceeding to the Tacoma. I can see that the launch is full of men. 
I can assure you folks that although we're able to follow every move, it's impossible to imagine what will happen next. The suspense here is unbelievable. The best guess is that they've left a suicide crew on board to put up as good a fight as possible against hopeless odds and to go down fighting. The British ships are... Achilles and Cumberland. If any alive has been saved today, recover aircraft. Does not to detain you, Captain Langston, nor any of your men. Captain Langsdorff? Well, Captain Duff. Well, let me come out to see you. I was glad to come. Things have changed a bit for you since we said goodbye four days ago. 
Yes. I had sort of an official order to come and see you because there's a rumor in Montevideo that you perished with your ship. The safety of my crew comes first. I want you to know, Captain, that everyone on the shore who's come in contact with you respects you very much. And I can only say as a private person, even your enemies, I'm sorry to see you in this situation. I'm alone. Every commander is alone. Thank you. Hunters, those who tracked her down, fought her, pursued her, and drove her to a violent and tragic death. 